Shut it, man! All right, it's time for an episode of Ring of the Hawk. I've been sitting on this one for a while like a hawk egg, desperately waiting for this guy to do something to help the popularity of this video. But he never will, so I might as well squeal and do it now. Today it's an episode of Ring of the Hawk requested by Sebastian Ruiz. If you want to make the hawk talk, sign up today. And of course... If you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comment section, Jack! Okay, it's Madman Fulton before TNA. There's not much else to say. Yes, because today it'll be the run on NXT where he wrestled under the name Sawyer Fulton. I'm sure there's some of you who will only know this guy for being Madman Fulton in TNA. When I first saw him, I thought, yeah, he has a look. But is he bringing anything else? I never really saw him do much of anything, so I still have no idea. Hopefully today's video will help me decide. It's not as if there's many legitimate big men left in wrestling anymore. This guy's like something out of the early 90s. He's six foot nine, apparently. He signed up with the WWE in 2012 and was mostly just used as a jobber until 2016 when they decided to use him properly. Match one, Sawyer Fulton and Travis Tyler versus the Wyatt family. Sawyer looks so different here. It took me a second to even recognize which one was him. Rowan and Harper take turns battering Travis Tyler for the majority of the match before Tyler is able to evade a body slam and get the tag to our guy. Sawyer is able to manage some shots on Harper, but not before he's caught with a big boot from Harper. Harper splashes Sawyer in the corner and delivers the discus clothesline on Sawyer for the win. He literally did nothing in this match besides get some punches on Harper. I know it's a job match, but come on, do something. It's an S. Match 2. Sawyer Fulton and Baron Corbin versus Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger. Wow, we've jumped forward a year here and Sawyer has a completely different look again with blonde hair and a weird singlet. We start with Baron Corbin and Jason Jordan. Baron tags in Sawyer and hits a bat breaker. Sawyer drives Dillinger into the corner and tags out. When Sawyer tags back in, Jason Jordan starts firing up and he takes down our team. Jason Jordan hits a back body drop on Sawyer and a drop kick on Corbin. Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger are able to work together and deliver a snapshot on Sawyer for the win. Again, Sawyer basically did nothing. He was just an enhancement talent once again. Not a very good one. It's an F. Match 3. Sawyer Fulton versus Colin Cassidy. Colin Cassidy is really over at this time with the formation of Enzo and Kaz. Sawyer's able to nail some punches, a cheap shot, and a shoulder block in the corner. Sawyer hits a splash in the corner and tries to hit another one, but Cass moves out of the way and hits a big boot. Cass delivers the Empire Elbow for the win. What do you think? It's an S, of course. Match 4. Sawyer Fulton and Angelo Dawkins versus Blake and Murphy. Sawyer has a wrestling headgear on and he's dressed like an Olympic athlete along with the future street prophet Angelo Dawkins. Sawyer and Murphy start with some chain wrestling and grappling. Murphy gets the tag and they both leapfrog over Sawyer and deliver a double back elbow. Sawyer hits a shot on Blake and gets the tag on Angelo. Buddy Murphy drops Dawkins with a brain buster and Blake hits the frog splash for the free count. So far, it's just literally him just getting his ass handed to him every single match. Maybe even Sonny Siaki's ass. It's an ass. Oh, no. Match 5, Sawyer Fulton, Angelo Dawkins versus Colin Cassidy and Enzo Mori. We actually get an entrance of Sawyer for the first time. I can't tell if he looks more like a geek than he did before. We start with Enzo and Sawyer in the ring. Enzo does a baseball slide and a drop toe hold and a little dance to added style. But all that just gets him a fireman's carry from Sawyer. Sawyer gets the tag and they deliver a double fireman's carry takedown. That looked lame. Angelo tags out and they go for the double carry again. But Enzo flips out and tags in Kaz. Kaz does a bit better and is able to tag back out. But not before Enzo hits a flying clothesline in the corner. Enzo goes up to the top rope but Sawyer pushes the rope out and Enzo falls on his nutsack. Sawyer tags in Angelo for a double gut buster. Blake and Murphy come down to the ring to give Carmella a couple of roses. This was random. When we cut back to the ring Sawyer is working an abdominal stretch on Enzo. Sawyer gets in Kaz's face and Enzo hits a sit out jawbreaker on Sawyer. Big Cass nails a big boot on Sawyer to send him out the ring. Cass hits the East River Crossing and the Rocket Launcher for the win. At least this match portrayed them to be something more than literally nothing. I'll give it a D. Room for improvement, let's see. Match 6, Sawyer Fulton and Angelo Dawkins versus the Hype Bros. Angelo Dawkins and Mojo Rawley will start this match off. Angelo tags in Sawyer but immediately gets caught with a drop kick from Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder with a splash in the corner and a big lariat from Mojo. Mojo says it's hammer time and hits a big drop on Sawyer. Sawyer's able to take advantage and pull Mojo off the ropes. Big double team move from our boys with a leap frog into a body splash on the ropes. Zack Ryder hits the broski boot on Angelo Dawkins and Sawyer breaks up the two count. Mojo body checks Sawyer out of the ring and the bros hit the hype rider on Angelo for the win. Honestly, Sawyer again did nothing. 
I'm sorry, it's an Stop S. It. Why did people want to see this? Matt Seven, Sawyer Fulton and Angelo Dawkins versus Blake and Murphy. Buddy Murphy and Angelo Dawkins begin the match. Brian Saxton says our team have been impressive the last few weeks. This is a complete lie, by the way. Angela gets worked over for a little bit as Sawyer continues to cheer on from the apron. Blake pulls Sawyer off the apron and he's down. Blake and Murphy with their Brain Buster Frog Splash combination for the win. How is a guy this big being booked so weak? I know he's here to do the J-O-B, but come on, it's got to be believable. Look at the size of this guy. This is starting to get Bastion Booger levels of shove it. Match 8, Sawyer Fulton and Angelo Dawkins versus the Vord Villains. Well, at least Sawyer got rid of that dumb headgear and Simon Gotch and Angelo Dawkins will start out. Sawyer gets the tag and attacks Gotch from behind and Sawyer drops an elbow. We get a double team as Sawyer drops Gotch with an atomic drop and Dawkins follows up with a drop kick. English hits a straight jacket side effect and the Villains nail a whirling dervish for the win. It's an S. Match 9. Sawyer Fulton and Andrew Dawkins versus Blake and Murphy. Wesley Blake and Andrew Dawkins will start this one. Sawyer gets the tag and they hit the double fireman's carry. Sawyer tags back out and they do it again. Fulton actually does something now for once and he starts taking out both Blake and Murphy. He hits a swinging gut wrench suplex on Murphy. But it's not too long before they hit their finisher and get the win anyway. Well, I would normally be impressed and bump up his grade for hitting a move. But we're on match 9 here. It shouldn't take this long for God's sake. It's an S. Oh, no. Match 10. Sawyer Sawyer Fulton and Angelo Dawkins versus the Vord Villains, again. Two months on and Sawyer now looks about as familiar as he's gonna look. Angelo Dawkins and Aiden English will start out with some grapples. Dawkins is able to pull English into the corner for the tag. Sawyer gets some shots in on English. Angelo drops English with a body slam and Sawyer comes off the middle rope with an elbow drop. Sawyer collides into the corner and allows Dawkins to tag in. The Vord villains hit the whirling dervish for the free. Madman Fulton is like that bogey that the booger could never manage to pick. He's up there in the shove it zone, that's for damn sure. Match 11, Sanity versus Bobby Roode and Ty Dillinger. Dusty Rhodes classic first round match. Roode and Dillinger are tag team partners that don't get on. This is Sanity's debut and so far we have no clue who are under the hoods and masks. We then see that it's our boy Sawyer Fulton. I think this is probably his best look along with his tag team partner Alexander Wolf. We start out and Sanity start unloading on Dillinger in the corner and Alexander Wolf will begin the match with Ty Dillinger. Sawyer tags in and there's some unique offense from Wolf and Fulton. Not a lot of info will be given on commentary as they're just confused as to what's going on. Bobby Roode tries to enter the ring but he puts his robe back on and walks out of the match. I don't blame him, he doesn't want to be involved in this mess. Ty Dillinger dumps his nappy of anger. Sawyer and Alexander hit a power slam suplex combination for the win. 11 matches in and he's won his first match. I like the repackaging. He really needed it after that. I mean, no one was going to be able to take him seriously. I think he's going to be muscle for sanity. Let's hope this lasts a while. I'll give it a C for new direction. After the match, the small one of sanity starts to unload on Dillinger. And we see the return of Nikki Cross to NXT. And then the other remaining member. And they hit the young blood on Dillinger. And it's revealed to be Eric Young. I like the look of the team and I think Fulton is a great fit. Match 12. Sanity versus Kota Ibushi and TJ Perkins. Dusty Rhodes Classic quarter final. What an odd combination of wrestlers in a tag team match. Alexander Wolf and Kota Ibushi start out. TJ and Kota return shots on Wolf for a little bit. But Perkins locks in a knee bar and he gets a tag again. When we come back from the break, Ibushi and Fulton are the legal men. Perkins and Ibushi try a double back elbow but can't knock Fulton down. Then they try to hit a double drop kick and send Fulton out of the ring. Ibushi hits a moonsault to Wolf on the outside. Soon after, TJ Perkins dives on Fulton but gets caught and slammed on the ring apron. Fulton tags out and drops Perkins for body slam onto Wolf's knees. When Fulton gets back in, they hit Perkins with a knee strike into a gut wrench suplex. I'm glad to see that his tag team offense is improving. They attempt the body slam knee combination but Perkins counters and Fulton goes face first into his partner's knee. Ibushi gets the tag and delivers a standing moonsault, but Fulton is able to break up the pin. TJ Perkins comes off the ropes with a drop kick and takes out Fulton. Ibushi hits the Golden Star Powerbomb on Wolf, but Young and Cross distract the referee as Fulton slides him with an elbow to Ibushi. Fulton gets the tag and they hit the suplex power slam combination for the win. Well, Sawyer Fulton has got a pinfall victory over Kota Ibushi. Never thought I'd say that sentence. I'm probably not saying it right either, eh? Someone in the comments? Let me know. Definitely the best match so far from Sawyer's performance and from a match perspective. Nothing special, but I'll give it a B oh, because yeah. it's by far the best we're going to see. Match 13, final match. Sanity versus TM61, Dusty Rhodes Classic semi-final match. A pre-match assault begins the match as Fulton tosses Shane Thorne off the top onto the apron. Eric Young then drives Nick Miller into the stairs. When we come back from the break, Thorne and Wolf start off. Thorne is hurt. Sawyer hits an atomic drop and Wolf hits an uppercut on Thorne for the two count. Sawyer Fulton is able to nail a splash in the corner for a two of his own. Alexander Wolf begins crowd killing while Shane Thorne is down. Thorne tries to make the tag but Nick Miller is knocked off the rope by Wolf. 
Bolt goes for a double team maneuver, but Wolf hits Fulton in the back by mistake. Nick Miller splashes both Sanity members in the corner and goes for the pin, but it's broken up by Wolf. Fulton's able to attack from behind on Nick Miller. Fulton tags Wolf in and they go for the power slam suplex combination, but Fawn hits a drop kick and Miller is able to roll up Wolf for the free. Solid tag team match and Fulton was hugely involved, but I think Wolf may have outshined him. Either way, it's a C. Game over. Sawyer Fulton would then suffer a torn pectoral muscle, which would put him out of action for several months. A later promo from Sanity would indicate that they were no longer with Fulton, as they would stomp on his jacket and throw it outside the ring. Billy and Dane would replace him as the muscle in Sanity. Saw would work a few NXT live show dates, but no longer with Sanity, and then he'd be released from his WWE contract on November the 3rd, 2017. He would be associated with TNA for a good few years before in August of this year. It was revealed Fulton had not renewed his contract. He still wrestles today for various independent promotions, but let's be honest, Sawyer cannot do the J.O.B. Most of his matches were him standing on the apron doing nothing whilst his tag team partner did the rest of the work, so Sawyer can shove it. The only thing from saving this from being Bastion Booger territory is that he was there to do the J.O.B. and he didn't disgust me. It's nice to see how much he has improved as Madman Fulton, but this version of Fulton was pretty weak, and if you don't agree with that, I'll peck out your eye with my beak. 